I want you to imagine sitting down to a glass of your favourite wine. Imagine savouring the delicate aroma of smoked bacon, or perhaps a subtle bouquet of cold campfire, with a hint of Band-Aid and a lingering ashtray character on the back palate. Well, this is exactly what winemakers experienced when their vineyards were exposed to smoke from bushfires and prescribed burns for prolonged periods of time. The issue of smoke taint, as it's commonly referred to, is not unique to Australia. Wine regions in Canada, North America and South Africa have also reported incidences of smoke exposure in vineyards. Unfortunately, the incidence of bushfires is expected to escalate as a result of climate change, in particular due to increased temperature, drought, wind and lightning strikes. That is, the environmental conditions that are conducive to bushfires. For the past eight years, I've been involved in research that's aimed at better understanding the physiological response of grapevines to smoke exposure, as well as the impact of bushfire smoke on the chemical composition and sensory properties of wine. These experiments have involved the application of smoke to grapevines out in the field, and then the subsequent analysis of smoke-affected grapes in wine. This has allowed us to identify some of the constituents of smoke that are responsible for the objectionable smoky aromas associated with smoke taint. We've then been able to develop new analytical techniques that can be used to screen for smoke taint in fruits and wine. This is particularly important for the wine industry because it allows grape growers and winemakers to determine whether or not their fruit has been affected by smoke before they go to the expense of harvesting it and making wine. We've also investigated methods for the amelioration of smoke taint. In the vineyard, we found that removing grapevine leaves before smoke exposure actually increases the intensity of smoke taint in resultant wines. However, removing leaves from grapevines after smoke exposure gave wines with a less apparent taint. In the winery, we've evaluated a range of different winemaking techniques, from reduced duration of skin contact during fermentation to the addition of oak chips and tannins to mask the objectionable smoke aromas and flavours. More recently, we've investigated whether or not common fining agents can actually remove smoke taint from wine. We found one particular product that significantly reduced the concentration of smoke marker compounds and the intensity of smoky aromas and flavours. Collectively, this work on smoke taint is an excellent example of how scientific research can be used to support industry, in this case, the Australian wine industry, to overcome specific environmental or production issues. How does this benefit you? Well, hopefully, the next time you sit down to a glass of your favourite wine, smoke taint doesn't even cross your mind. Instead, you can enjoy delicate fruit aromas or perhaps a subtle floral bouquet with a hint of toasty oak and a lingering tannin finish.